from Saigon, Long Bin, Bearcat, Da Nang, Coochie, Play Coo, Lai K, Chu Lai, Fu Cot, Van Rang, and Cameron Bay in Vietnam. From Guam, Wake Island, and Clark Field in the Philippines. From the USS Ranger and the USS Coral Sea on Yankee Station in the Gulf of Tonkin. And from Karat, Udorn, Tak Li, Uban, Nakhon Phanam, and Bangkok, Thailand. The Bob Hope Christmas Special, starring Raquel Welch, Barbara McNair, Elaine Dunn, Madeleine Hartog Bell, Miss World, Bill Crosby, Earl Wilson, Les Brown and his band of renown. We knew it was going to be an unusual trip right from the start. Les Brown was on time. At 10.05, it was wheels up and out across the Pacific, 8,000 miles to Thailand. Our first stop was with the men of the 8th Tactical Fighter Wing at Ubon. As you can see, these are dedicated men. You can also see what they're dedicated to. We didn't have to worry about the sense of humor here. Look at this sign from one lonely GI who's headed for home in 76 days. you pooch eyes. I don't know what that means, but it played very big at the bathhouse. <laughs> very thrilled to be back here at Uban Royal Air Tha Thai Air Base. The gateway to Uban Racha Tiny. Is that a word or a booby trap? No word, Wolfpack. The world's largest distributor of MIG parts. The base has a wonderful location right between Laos and Cambodia, two of our stronger allies. <laughs> Those fellows in the back there with the go-to-hell hats are from the Australian Air Force. They're the guys who go around putting kangaroo stencils on everything. <laughs> I woke up this morning with a pouch on my pouch. <laughs> and I must say the Thais are probably the most polite people in the world. When they greet you, they bow and put their hands like this. I'm glad somebody finally explained that to me. I thought they were praying for my act. <laughs> We've been invited to do another command performance at the palace again, and I think it's wonderful. This is the fourth time the king has invited us. He keeps hoping we'll bring back the towels. <laughs> and now it's back to Pasadena, California for the Rose Bowl parade. Would you believe Takli, Thailand? Would you believe this sign? This is no time for sulking, not with this house full of kerosene burners. Captain Neely Johnson has just returned from his 100th mission over Vietnam, and he's introducing me. Hold it, hold it. Gentlemen, I just finished my 100 today, and I can think of no better way to celebrate than to introduce Mr. Bob Hope. think of anybody I'd rather have introduced me than the guy just finished his 100 mission. What do you think about that? Johnson. <laughs> Captain, wonderful. Captain Johnson, right there. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are in Tak Lee, the megalopolis of the boondocks. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Now, Tak Lee, I never thought we'd be playing in this fungus patch again, but here we are. <laughs> now, 
I found out a way to beat the uh, heat. Salt tablets. Isn't that it? I've taken so many tablets that when I sweat, I throw it over my left shoulder. <laughs> there are two kinds of pilots here, the U.S. Air Force and Thailanders. You can watch a plane land and tell who's flying it. The Thailanders use the runway. <laughs> Pilots like to ad lib after a couple of shots of Mekong, they come in without the plane. <laughs> now, Thailand is our strongest ally in the Southeast Asia. It must be our embassy here still has windows. <laughs> and this country's never been conquered. No wonder, nobody can get through that traffic. native name for Thailand is Mung Thai, which means land of the free. The guy who thought that up never tried to buy anything in Bangkok, I want to tell you that. <laughs> this is a rough spot in the program for me. I can't figure out if the audience is applauding me or welcoming Raquel Welsh on stage. Bearcat in Vietnam, although the Kong has dropped in several times. You can see they had the welcome mat on. We paid our respects to the Army Canine Corps. These are tracker dogs, and they're harmless. Well, they said they were harmless. I feel like somebody's breakfast. And now it's up to play coup to Hill Country. If it's Hill Country, why don't they get those choppers up? They claimed we were skimming six feet off the ground to avoid snipers. First chopper I've ever seen with curb feelers. Four years ago, this was play cool. All they had was a captain and two platoons of monkeys. This is what it looked like this year. These pictures aren't for you, they're for Ho Chi Minh in case he's got any questions. I better get on stage, they're playing my song. Hey, hey look at here. Ooh, what a hot hill. Here we are at Play Coup, Vietnam, just about 25 miles from the biggest Viet Cong base. It's called Cambodia. <laughs> and I love the modern facilities they have here. We asked for the washroom, they gave us two shovels. <laughs> two shovels mark his and hers. Bring Raquel Welsh back out. This isn't for the fellas, it's for me. All right, everybody back on the ground. <laughs> Say, Bob, am I standing in the right place? Don't worry, honey, if you're not, they'll move the base. <laughs> 
Mr. Kelly, on behalf of those assembled here, I'd like to welcome you to our little ready room. Thank you, Bob. It's m I'm most happy to be here and see all these boys. They were boys before you came out. Now they're old men. <laughs> Here we are flying the bamboo corridor. That's Laos down below on one side of the Mekong River, and there's Nakhon Phanom, just a bow and arrow shot away. Here we did our show for 500 gung-ho Air Force pilots, crew chiefs, and technicians who officially don't exist. If you think war is hell, try winging your way home with a tail full of lead from Hanoi and be enlisted as a diplomatic secret. Watch these birdmen flip when our swinging canary shows up in the landing pattern. Give them hell. If you don't give in, take it on the chin. You are bound to win if you will only buckle down. Cat was a new base for us, and the audience a strange mixture. Half of our 10,000 were the sleek and polished gentlemen of the Air Force, and the other half were the grim grunts, men of the 101st Airborne, who have been dropped in the jungle and fought their way through rice paddies to come to the show. Here's one patrol that just made it back from the boondocks. They traveled 23 miles to give me this shell with their names inscribed on it. They had a Santa Claus for us, and here's what we had for them. Hey, I understand that your husband hunting, is that right? Bob, hunting is such a harsh word. However, I am single, and you might say that I am shopping for a man. Boy, I want to tell you, you came to the right supermarket here. <laughs> it just happens these fellas are having a clearance sale today. <laughs> that one down there gives green stamps. I got it. <laughs> you got a lot to offer, according to my reports. Among other things, you're quite a linguist, is that right? Oh, not really, I just speak English, French, and Spanish. Maybe we could establish a little more rapport. Is there anybody out there who can speak Spanish or French? <laughs> huh? Right there? <laughs> what the hell, do you have a springboard there? What was that? What's your name, soldier, and where are you from? Herman Jenny from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Well, which, which language do you speak, uh, French or Spanish? Anything. He's not a linguist, he's anxious. <laughs> Go ahead, say hello to Madeline. Please do the film. A little, a little <laughs> This isn't just for you, it's for the people too, you know. Do you mind speaking up a little so we can all get in on the whole bit? It's a show, you know? <laughs> this is not a boudoir. This is a... <laughs> 
We're playing a pasture here for some poker. Let's try and work this out. All right, a little louder. Vous savez, depuis uh, pas mal de temps, j'ai vu votre, votre photo dans les journaux et vraiment, je suis tellement content d'être ici juste pour vous voir. Que... <laughs> Good night, folks. We're a little late. Man, if I could say hello like that, I'd have been married when I was six. And the weather was seven. Now it's your turn, Madeline. Je suis enchantée de vous connaître. Vous êtes vraiment un très bel homme. Et je peux vous dire seulement, en vous regardant, que vous êtes un très courageux soldat. Quick, what'd she say? What'd she say? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. Well, stop looking and listen a little bit. Go, Madeline. Est-ce que vous aimeriez serrer dans vos bras une fille comme moi? Oh, I, I couldn't. C'est pas vrai, est-ce que vous n'aimeriez serait dans vos bras une fille comme moi? I, I really couldn't. I, I don't know. What does she want? Maybe I could. Hey, listen, let me in on that. Give me something really romantic that I can say to her. <laughs> Man, you're ready, aren't you? Let me, give me something romantic I can say to her. Aimez-vous les chiens? Vous du tout? Qu'est-ce que c'est, euh... Aimez what? Aimez-vous les chiens. Aimez-vous les chiens. Les chiens. Les chiens. Les... Aimez-vous. <laughs> Do you brush after every meal? <laughs> ah. Aimez-vous les chiens. Oh, yes, yes, Bob. <laughs> Fabulous. What did I say? Do you like Cocker Spaniel? <laughs> when they told me that they expected us to make an arrested landing on a carrier, I knew they were putting me on. They just had to switch us to copters and land us safely on the deck. But when we were 200 miles out over the South China Sea in a ridiculous plane called the C-2A, and the pilot headed for flight deck at 130 miles an hour, I did what any red-blooded American would do. I turned green. Notice that smiling face. You thought I couldn't act. There's Les Brown, and he isn't acting. I was still complaining the next morning when we started our show on the flight deck. Too hot for this. Put that in my trunk, man. That's going to be a big story connected to that where I was a hero or something. Put that in my trunk. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very thrilled to be here. I'm, where are we? <laughs> Board the USS Rangers. <laughs> you Even the Jolly Green Giant couldn't hang ten on this surfboard. <laughs> Ah, this is a great ship for liberty. The other end's in Hong Kong. <laughs> and for anybody who hates being here on this boat, how'd you like to be here without it? <laughs> I, I can't wait to leave this raft because we're going to be launched by catapult. <laughs> I hope everything goes back into place. <laughs> Did you see the landing we made on this carrier yesterday? Tell me, were the wings folded when we landed? <laughs> I haven't been hooked like that since vaudeville. <laughs> now, if you see a pair of jockey shorts buzzing the bridge, they're mine. If you hear a few strange sounds now and then, that's what's causing the trouble up there. The radar. The Admiral was kind of chicken and wouldn't turn it off. And now here to take over the show is the Lawrence Olivier of Broadway. A great guy and a wonderful vocalist, Earl Wilson. Thank you, fellas. You know, back in the States, we've heard the civilian and naval experts' opinions of the war. But I've been asked by my newspaper editors to find out the facts 
from the one man who would really know what's happening out here, the average seaman. So I asked your personnel officer for the enlisted man who'd been stationed on the Ranger the longest. And I'd like to talk to him now. Won't you please step out here? What do you want painted? <laughs> Why would I want anything painted? That's the way it is in the Navy, Mac. We paint it, and if we can't paint it, we polish it, and if we can't polish it, we promote it. Commander, <laughs> this isn't a work detail. I'd like to ask you a few questions. And first, uh, what is your name? Donnelly, William Donnelly. <laughs> That's a very famous name. Well, that should be. I'm the head painter. <laughs> oh, you mean you're in charge? No, I mean I paint the heads. <laughs> Bill, if I may call you that, and I'm not too familiar with service insignia, what is your rank? Apprentice seaman. <laughs> Apprentice seaman? But what are all those stripes? Whip marks. <laughs> How long have you been stationed on a ranger? 20 years. <laughs> How's that possible? This ship's only 10 years old. No wonder I couldn't find a hook for my hammock. <laughs> and what is your naval occupational specialty? I told you, I paint. And what do you do after you paint? That's a naval secret. <laughs> well, I have a top secret clearance. Answer my question. What do you do after you paint? I scrape it off. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. You think that's stupid? You're paying for it with your taxes. <laughs> They're kidding. They're not gonna catapult me off this deck and... Those aren't raisins down there, that's our Cameron Bay audience. 27,000 GIs, all in on a pass. It's ridiculous. We should be on percentage here. Yes, sir, here we are at Cameron Bay, the Sahara of the Far East. This is what the French Foreign Legion is trying to forget. <laughs> now, it's wonderful to be here in this zillion dollar cat box. <laughs> I've never seen so much sand. Is that your CO, the fellow with the black eye patch? This is the world's biggest supply depot. It looks like Bobby Kennedy's pantry. <laughs> this is the home of the first logistical command. I hope you thought you'd like to know, and it's a very efficient port. In less than 12 hours, 50% of every cargo that lands here has found its way into the black market. <laughs> they love me in Cameron Bay. They applauded my every move. Honest. Ask Raquel. She was right next to me on the stage. Raquel, anyway, here's the way we all feel about you. You make me feel so young. <laughs> you make me feel that spring has sprung. And every time I see you grin, I'm such a happy, ooh, I watch your grin. You make me feel so young. You make me feel there are songs to be sung. Ooh, baby song. Even when I'm old and gray, this is gonna make me gray today. Cause you make me feel so young. Hey, Bobby, here's how you make me feel. You're an older smoothie. Sneaky old Frankie. You are a tribute to the magic of Medicare. You're an older smoothie. Crafty old bounder. You're a challenge to the likes of a girl like 
shall we? This is the spot they waited for at every base hour finale, or as the GIs call it, four hits and a miss. Oh. Yeah, this is the cart marshal. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Well, this is mutiny and you'll never get away with it. I have friends in the motor pool. <laughs> Stop whining, Bob. We're taking over the show. Yeah, Bob, you're through. This is girl power. You must be kidding. They came to see me. I'm the star. They didn't come to see you. Isn't that right, fellas? Any other questions? Yeah, where can I find the chaplain? We don't need you, Bob. We can do anything you can do. Oh. Show him, Raquel. Joy are you, flower seekers. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here with you tourists. Say, what part of Miami is this? Yeah, Miami! <laughs> um, we had a wonderful trip over. I want to tell you, the military gave us their VIP plane. It belonged to a five-star general, Pershing. <laughs> How can she look like that and sound like Burl? <laughs> You've had your fun. Now make way for the master. Hey, 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 right. hey, hey, hey. Well, this fellow here kindly stepped to the Deceptions and lies. At last we got wise to all his prevarications. We must defy this uncouth Captain Bly, this antiquated knucklehead. We won't carry his hat, no more scrubbing his back, no more serving his breakfast in bed. So will this fellow here kindly step to the rear and let us women lead the way? From night to night you'll find me Too weak to break the chains that bind me I need no shackles to remind me I'm just a prisoner of love Love? Whoop. What a ham! His makeup kit weighs more than he does hours out and we had to turn back because he forgot his eyebrow tweezers. <laughs> hey, Barbara, how did he get you to go on this trip? He promised me I'd get to meet royalty. He let me walk his dog, Prince. <laughs> what about you, Madeline? He said he showed me the most famous old ruin in the world. He gave me a picture of General de Gaulle. <laughs> he said he'd introduce me to all the greatest philosophers of the Orient. He took me to a fortune cookie factory. <laughs> He told me I'd be treated like a star. I was. He kept peeking into my room with a telescope. Don't blame me for things that have happened to you. For I am the king and you are just peasants. So don't bug me. Some king. I'd like to crown him. Well, he is related to the nobility. Really? Yeah, his great-grandfather was in charge of goose pimples for Lady Godiva. But he is the greatest comedian in the world. How do you know? 
It says so on his bathrobe. Tear and I sent it over, and she does sewing on the side. She picks up a little lawn, lawn money for laundry and little things like that. Don't you? Oh, my. Well, let's be fair. He really is considerate. That's true. When he found four scorpions in his room, he gave one to each of us. <laughs> They're crazy about me. Tell the fellas you were kidding. Oh, they know that, Bob. Well, We've fun. loved every minute of this trip. It's been the greatest experience of our lives. We dug the train of Georgia name and at you like we love the game. But what gave us all our biggest thing was just being here with you. And George Dagon and Thailand too. Oh what the view and even that jungle round flake could come. We love it. Cobras that were whoppers uh, gave us all a great big boot. Kong and black pajamas, daily melodramas, each one of you, we all salute. It's been a ball, we thank you all. You made our troop feel ten feet tall. We hope that we don't get another call. We love being here, hope it's over next. smiling faces. You know what, I know what they're doing? They're listening to our C-130 pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas M. Sumner, explaining that the landing field at Coochie is only 2,600 feet long, but not to worry because they can usually make it. They're also being warned that in case of forced landing, please stay in the plane. We have plenty of ammunition on board. Here we are with the 25th Division. Their motto is, if it moves, shoot it. Watch me stand still during this monologue. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Very happy to be back here. Achu Coochie. <laughs> Coochie, that's Vietnamese for you want it, you can have it. <laughs> Every time Barbara McNair stepped on the stage, the audience was hers and hers alone. For once in my life, I have someone who needs me. Someone I've needed so long For once I'm afraid I can go where life leads me And somehow I know I'll be strong For once I can touch What my heart used to dream of Make my dream come true. For once in my life, I won't let sorrow hurt me. Not like it's hurt me before. For once I have something I know won't desert me. I'm not alone anymore.
here's the show I still don't believe. The largest GI audience I ever played to. The nicest Christmas present we ever got. Some say 30,000, some say 28. You count. I'm going out to grab them before I lose a single one. Merry Christmas. I just want to tell you it's great to be back here in General Westmoreland's ranch. General Westmoreland went to see the president. I guess it didn't work out. He's back. This face is loaded with brass. One PFC spent his whole tour of duty trying to salute his way out of the washroom. <laughs> they don't have this many stars at the Academy Awards, and there's just as much jealousy. <laughs> but uh, enough about my problem. At least once at every base, we have to get the audience in on the act. Don't just sit there, get up and wiggle. in the Philippines wasn't on our schedule, but there's no saying no to Colonel Bob Gates. They sent out eight interceptors to escort us in or shoot us down. After a very warm greeting from General Ben Davis and his charming wife, we did a quick show in the airstrip, paid our respects to the patients at the Clark Base Hospital, and eight hours later, we were on stage in Guam doing our last show. Our last show stretched a half hour, as usual. I don't know whether the Guam maniacs are the greatest audience in the world, or we're the greatest hams and just hate to get off. This is the last stop on this particular tour, as you know. We're headed back home after two weeks, and I know everybody has great memories of this tour. There's a lot of people connected with this show, all these technicians, all these people who are volunteers, and we're very proud of They do a marvelous job. All the sound boys down here, Dave Forrest and Mike Thornton and all these guys. Woody Marks here and all these fellas. And I want them, I, I wish everybody backstage would come out here. Come on out here, Pat. Come on out here, Bill, Bill Larkin. Come on out here. Michelle, Barney McNulty, Marlene, our hairdresser, Ron Warren, our newest slave, Annie Morrow, it's her birthday, Charlie Solomon, Earl Wilson, Les Helena, Elaine Dunn, Syl, worrying about the schedule, Miss World, Joan Moss, timing me, Fred King, Johnny Pollock, trying to hear, Barbara McNair, Colonel Red Beasley, our fearless leader from the Pentagon, Sugar Daniel, Raquel Welch, Pat Curtis, trying not to look like her husband, Al Borden, Phil, Clean Ray Brannigan, Earl Elwood, Stash Larkin, and Doc Myron, trying to steal the camera. At Guam, as at every other base, we close the show with Barbara leading us in Silent Night.
Have a Merry Christmas and God bless you. Bye. Well, that's about it. I wish I could have bottled this group, but they have to get back to the store. If there's anything an actor hates, it's losing an audience. I hope this one is real careful. There we go. There's a few of the faithful waving goodbye before we start the long trip home. It's been a great Christmas. I know there are millions of Americans who would have liked to share it with us. And there's a lot to remember, a lot to think about. Memories of the people and the faces that will stay with us a long time. I want to thank the Defense Department and my favorite travel agency, the USO, for helping to make it possible. I also want to thank the Chrysler Corporation for their generosity and thoughtfulness in giving up their commercials so we could show you more of our fighting men. And before I forget, I want to thank all of my fellow gypsies for a great job. This was an ambitious trip. 22 bases in 15 days. Colonel Red Beasley of the Pentagon really laid one out this year. You know, people ask us why we keep making these trips. Maybe this, in part, answers their question. They even fought to get in to see us. How about this kid with a cap on his lens? You probably sue the drugstore when the film comes back. The big topic of conversation here is how many days you got left? Most of these kids have it tattooed on their eyeballs. You work for these kids and hear the laughs and applause, and you really forget there's a war going on. And you visit the hospitals, and you're brought back to reality. Hi, uh, what's your name? My name's Joe Palmar, PSC. Where, where are you from, Joe? Sure. La Pony, California. I wish you could glad to see you. My name's Phil Crosby, and this is Elaine Dunn, and we're, we're with the Bob Hope Tour. I want to wish you a happy new year and uh, a speedy recovery. How do you feel, all right? Oh, I feel all right. I feel great. What, uh, what's your unit? Never. Oh, First Battalion, 3rd Marines. A Marine. About as tough as you can get, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> The thing that impresses you about these patients is their wonderful sense of humor. They amaze you the way they look up at you and smile. Maybe they're doing it to keep up our morale, and we can use it when we walk into these hospitals. Here's Les Brown and one of our heroes. They took this jagged two-pound steel slug out of this boy's hip. They got this boy right through the pocketbook. Too bad it wasn't Bing's wallet. He wouldn't have been scratched. Say it again. Indiana. Indiana. Sounds like Hoagie, doesn't it, Les? Can I do it? Come here, doctor. Come here, I want to talk to you. I want the doctor to tell me about this. What, uh, what happened to this boy? Lean down in He had multiple fragment wounds from a mine or a mortar. Mortar. And uh, got an artery lacerated on the right. And he's been repaired and doing great. Everything's coming back. Isn't that nice? Be all right. Well, that's wonderful. And you'll be back there in Indiana, huh? Yes, sir. Well, they did pretty good. They're going to the Rose Bowl, you know. So get well and... You wonder why some of these kids are still smiling. Well, these are the lucky ones. A lot of their buddies didn't make it at all. This war gets bigger every year. And as the war gets bigger, the casualties mount. The Fighting Fourth Division here at Pleiku now has its own memorial. And it's inscribed, I cannot think of them as dead who walk with me no more. Along the path of life I tread, they have but gone before. We had a great Christmas. Thanks for the memory.